Okay, next up we have Mesoblast trading under the ASX code MSB with a market cap around 345 million. They are a world leader in developing allogenetic cellular medicines for the treatment of severe and life-threatening inflammatory conditions. The company has leveraged its proprietary Messi Kamal lineage cell therapy technology platform to establish a broad portfolio of late stage product candidates which respond to severe infl inflammation by releasing anti-inflammatory factors that counter and modulate multiple, multiple effector arms of the immune system, resulting in significant reduction of damaging inflammatory process. Joining us today is Mesoblast CEO, Silvio Itescu. Welcome, Silvio, and over to you, and I hope I got those words right. Thank you very much. Some, some complex words. <laughs> <laughs> if we could go to the first slide, please. Next slide. Okay. Um, this busy slide really encompasses the investment highlights in the company. Um, we're, we're developing a, a novel allogeneic, meaning off the shelf cell therapy products, um, which are based on a particular type of cell called a mesenchymal stromal cell that enables treatments to be developed without the need for donor matching or without any kind of immunosuppression, essentially off the shelf, off the shelf products. Um, we have two platforms. One is called Remy Stem Cell, which is our lead platform. And the second is called Rex Lemmy Stro Cell, which is the next generation using monoclonal antibodies to isolate very, very pure populations of cells. The Remy Stem Cell platform is a, mo is a more advanced um, it's completed certain phase three trials and is in phase three in addition for patients with the adult version of steroid refractory acute graft versus host disease. But the pediatric program has completed phase three. Uh, it demonstrated in a devastating disease after bone marrow transplantation that we met the primary endpoint and we see a, a more than four year long term survival benefit where at least 50% of the children are cured of this devastating disease, whereas very few children are alive uh, more than two years using existing standard of care. Um, we have met with the FDA several times and we've been delayed in terms of approval. We have a meeting with the FDA coming up towards the latter part of this month where we're providing to the FDA data from a brand new or a new second potency assay that was in place during the phase three, but that data um, have previously not been shown to the FDA. And um, we're looking forward to sharing those data with the FDA. And we'll, we'll be updating the market after after this upcoming meeting. The product for the adult uh, indication, which is a market size five times larger than pediatric, uh, we're collaborating in a phase three program with uh, the, the, the lead centers in the US that do these bone marrow transplants that account for about 80% of bone marrow transplants. They will be conducting a pivotal trial in adults with the same devastating disease uh, in, in, in adults who have no, no alternative therapies. With respect to the second generation platform, Rex Lemistro Cell, we've completed a first phase three trial for heart failure uh, in patients with reduced ejection fraction, which accounts for about 50% of the heart failure market. We have uh, what's called a regenerative medicine advanced therapy designation, an RMAT, for end-stage patients with the most severe complication who are being kept alive with a device called an LVAT. And on, on, in these patients, we've shown that uh, we, we improve survival uh, and, and improve outcomes. And we've had a meeting with the FDA as recently as around two weeks ago to talk about the potential pathway for an approval in the sickest of the sick patients with uh, these devices in place. We'll be able to update the, the market in the, in the coming weeks when we get the formal minutes from that FDA meeting. Um, even more exciting is a study that was just published with our collaborators out of Boston uh, on a randomized controlled trial in children with congenital heart disease where, where a single injection of our cells into the heart at the time of, of, of a surgical operation to fix the heart uh, resulted 12 months later in a doubling of the size of that left ventricle. So we were able to, 
to substantially increase the size of the left ventricle, and that allowed the children to get a life-saving procedure that that we think is going to give them a long-term lifespan uh, that is relatively normal. Uh, and, and and we're very excited about this indication. We've got a uh, an orphan drug designation from the FDA, and we've got um, a pediatric rare disease voucher for this indication, and we expect to go back to the FDA in uh, sometime in, in the next quarter to talk about what a what an approval pathway in this this pediatric population might look like. Finally, um, the same second generation platform Rex Lemistrocell being developed for back pain, inflammatory back pain, uh, and and uh, a first phase three trial has already completed. Uh, we have an RMAT also for this indication from the FDA. Uh, an agreement with the FDA uh, of what a second phase three trial needs to achieve to uh, get to an approval for this indication. That second trial uh, is underway. Next slide, please. This is a snapshot of the mechanism of action of these cells, and it's my only scientific slide. Uh, you, the mesenchymal stromal cell in purple in the middle has a, a certain a, a bunch of receptors that bind inflammatory cytokines and you all know the term uh, cytokine storm so when these cells are in the middle of a cytokine storm whether it's in the lungs or the heart or the the, the gut in gvhd or inflammatory bowel disease they encounter a multitude of inflammatory cytokines il1 il6 il17 tnf interferon gamma they all bind these cells activate the cells the cells then secrete counter-inflammatory uh, molecules that orchestrate um, an anti-inflammatory cascade, turning off the bad players that mediate the cytokine storm and that cause the the destruction to the disease that we're trying to target. Uh, and that's the, the the common mechanism of action of all of our products that target those diseases that I've just talked to you about. Next slide, please. So this is the pipeline. Well, I mentioned to you that our pediatric product is already in front of the FDA. Uh, for adults, it's beginning of a, a phase three. Um, for heart failure, we've done one phase three. We're in the we're going to do a second one, but we're also um, in in the midst of discussions around accelerated approval pathways for both the sickest adults as well as children. And for back pain, we've com commenced a second phase three trial. Next slide. Um, for GVHD, the market opportunity, 30,000 people across um, various jurisdictions get an off-the-shelf allogeneic transplant. Um, about 25% uh, of those patients get the most severe form of GVHD, um, steroid refractory GVHD. So uh, we, we in, in the US alone, of the 10,000 transplants, about 1,500 children get transplanted, and we're targeting about 500 of those children with steroid refractory GVHD um, and five times as many adults. Next slide, please. For children, um, as I mentioned, we've got an upcoming meeting in March. We're very, um, we look forward to this meeting where we'll be presenting data from a, from a second assay that the FDA has asked for. Uh, and it, it demonstrates that the product that we call Ryonsil, made with the current manufacturing process, which the FDA has inspected, demonstrates far greater potency than an earlier generation product, which provides the, the context to the potency assays and what they mean. Next slide, please. For adults, as I've said, um, those who've failed uh, existing therapy, and there's only one that's approved, um, the the mortality, the survival rather, is 20 to 30% by 100 days, a very, very dismal outcome. In these adults, our pilot data shows that we have a 67% survival through 100 days, which is remarkable. Those data have been provided to the FDA, uh, and we're coming to them with the the, the, the adult trial that um, is being um, developed by the BMT-CTN, as I've mentioned, they will be conducting this trial. They they control 80% of all transplants across the US, and they will fund the vast majority of this, this trial. So it will not cost Mesoblast much more than the manufactured product that we have to provide. Next slide, please. 
With respect to the heart failure program, this is a snapshot of the unmet need, the data, the, the mechanism targeting inflammation, and our discussions with the FDA. It, it, it suffice to say that it's a devastating complex. It's the number one cause of mortality in the Western world. And five years after diagnosis, 50% of patients are dead. Um, we, we've shown a 50% plus reduction in major outcomes of mortality, heart attacks, and strokes in a study in, a, in our phase three trial that recruited over 500 patients. Those form the data of the, dis, uh, the, the form the basis of the discussion that we just had with the FDA, where, where that trial plus our previous LVAD trial represent two confirmatory studies of an endpoint that re reduces mortality in the sickest of the sick patients. Next slide, please. Um, and I think, as, I, as I've said to you, the, the end stage uh, patients um, have a, an RMAT designation for the LVAT population, uh, which demonstrated that we could reduce mortality in the uh, high risk patients by 82% over a 12 month period. That's the data that we presented to the FDA. Next slide, please. Finally, the pediatric study that I just mentioned earlier, recently published in December in the main cardiothoracic journal, um, not only did it demonstrate a doubling of the size of the left ventricle in children who got a little shot of our cells into the left ventricle at, at, at an 18 month of age, roughly, but more importantly, um, almost doubled the number of children who could undergo a definitive procedure where they have a normal left ventricle and a normal right ventricle, which is really the objective of trying to treat these, these very, very sick children um, with congenital heart disease. Next slide, please. And I think I've got one more slide or two more slides, which is in patients with severe back pain, a, a multi-billion dollar market opportunity, 7 million patients a year in the US alone, about the same number across Europe, suffer from inflammatory back pain. It's the number one cause for opioid prescriptions. And we all know about the opioid epidemic. Um, this is what we're trying to fix with a simple injection straight into the disc. Next slide, please. And again, the snapshot here of the program, we've, we had a, a first phase three trial that demonstrated over three years of significant reduction in pain following one injection. We've met with the FDA, we've got regulatory um, uh, 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 RMAT designation uh, and agreement with the FDA that a second trial that meets that same endpoint that we met in trial number one would result in approval. Next slide, please. This is the milestone snapshot um, that we're going to continue to update the market on every quarter. We provided an update uh, in, in our AGM in December, and I think it's safe to say that we've been extremely busy in the last quarter, and so we achieved all of our targets for each of our three major programs, and highlighted here are the upcoming milestones in the next one to two quarters. Some very significant milestones, both with the FDA um, as well as uh, clinical outcomes. Uh, and needless to say, we, we continue to have some significant discussions with partners because I think both the cardiac and the back pain assets will require substantial commercial um, partnership with the likes of the major cardiac and, and inflammatory pain companies that have um, substantial sales forces, which uh, we will not be investing in, but we will leverage. In Europe, for example, we have a partnership on our back pain program with Grunenthal, Europe's number one pain company, um, where on on, uh, on on successful outcomes of the current trial, uh, we stand to 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 gain as much as uh, I think ninety to one hundred million in in uh, immediate payments, and they will take on sales, marketing, and distribution for us. I think that might be my last slide. Thanks, Sylvia. Great presentation. As a long-term sufferer of back pain, I should sh be watching uh, with bated breath how that uh, that progresses. Uh, <laughs> now, I've got some questions here. Um, with regards to the uh, Rion seal, why did the FDA request additional data from a second potency assay, and was the additional data in line with the original potency assay? Yeah, look, you know, it's the it's first product of its kind, first in class. 
and uh, you know we've we've suffered a couple of years of delays and ongoing requests for more data by the FDA, uh, even though we, we we were successful and even though we had an advisory committee meeting that voted nine to one advising the FDA to approve the product. Um, you know, FDA wants more, a bit more clarity and a bit more certainty that every vial that will go into the market to treat children and adults is identical and meets stringent potency requirements. So this second potency assay, I think, addresses FDA's concerns and is yet very much in line with the first assay and, in fact, was uh, in place even in the phase three trial. So we actually had more than one assay in place. We just, um, the, the, we've just reanalyzed the data in a more, uh, I would say, more robust way and we've provided all the data to the FDA and we think it, it more than meets their, their, uh, their criteria. But I think you know you need to to appreciate that the product, even when it's approved for children, will be available for hospitals and and users for much more much wider use. And I think the FDA wants to be certain that when they release this product on the market, its widespread use will will come with potency assays and disclaimers that that allow it to be used safely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I totally, totally understand. And how important is the ongoing development of uh, Rivascor? Uh, is the rare pediatric and orphan drug designation from the FDA? Well, look, it's a, that's a good question. P- pediatric rare disease vouchers um, can be monetized. So on approval, the, the fact that we've got orphan drug designation, the fact that this is a high, uh, highly unmet need in, in a high risk population means that we think we can get to approval in a sh- relatively short shorter period of time on approval having a pediatric rare disease voucher uh, that's a monetizing asset that uh, pharmaceutical companies pay somewhere around 100 million dollars for because it gives potential use for other drugs that have blockbuster status where if you can reduce the time to approval using such a voucher for another drug um, for a pharma company that's got a blockbuster drug, that can mean a billion to two billion uh, in sales. So that we see that as a as a very valuable asset that we could on sell. Still, we absolute pleasure to uh, to have you on. I'll be certainly watching uh, the progress of the uh, the back pain uh, treatment. But thanks for your time today. Thank you.